Due to this being a reference card, it simply came in the anti-static bag that you can see below. There were no other included accessories with this card. Obviously, when you come to buying a card like this from one of the vendors such as Sapphire, XFX or HIS, it will come with all of the accessories that they include with it. By putting the 6850 on top of the 6870, you can see that the 6870 has got a little bit extra length to it. Taking that away, and we can have a look at, at the actual card, and you can see that it does take up two expansion slots in the back of your case. And you can see that it actually spreads the length of the card, so the cooler is no higher than the actual expansion slots itself. You can also see the overall styling of the card is very similar to the 6850. It's the black and red colours of AMD, tells us that it's the Radeon HD6870 and the fan itself is slightly different to the 6850 in design but it has still got the Radeon graphics from AMD sticker set in the middle of it. Taking a look at the bottom of the card you can see that the cooler actually overlaps the PCB a little bit. I'm not quite sure why because obviously heat is going to be able to come out of there and it's not going to have much room to actually go so I'm not quite sure why they've done that but overall the PCB you can see is a dark brown to sort of black colour which does resemble AMD's colours you can see all of the various different screws for mounting the cooler on top of it and you can see that it's got this X clamp bracket which obviously on the other side of that is where the GPU would sit. Just to give you an insight about this card and the 6850 as well and really to stop any confusion this card is set to take over from the 5770 and not the 5870 as most people thought. You will realise this in fact when you actually see the benchmarks later on in the review. If you want something a bit faster you will have to wait for the 6900 series cards which are set to launch a little bit closer to Christmas. The 6800 series is also said to give up to two times more performance than the current Radeon 5000 series cards. The full specs of this card is that it has a core clock speed of 900 megahertz running on a 40 nanometer technology. It uses 1120 stream processors, it uses one gigabyte of GDDR5 memory running at 1050 megahertz using a data rate of 4.2 gigabits per second and does also use a new 256 bit memory interface. The more technical specs on this card is that it has 1.7 billion transistors, has a compute power of 2 teraflops, uses 56 texture units with a texture fill rate of 50.4 gigatexels per second. It also has, just like the 6850, 32 raster operation processors and it also has a pixel fill rate of 28.8 gigapixels per second. This particular card has some other features as well as the 6850 and some of the other cards that will be coming on the market um, from AMD. Firstly, it has second generation DirectX 11. DirectX 11 is the latest version of DirectX and basically by having a second generation DirectX 11, this particular card gives you faster tessellation and geometry throughput. And with more and more games being released um, using DirectX 11, this card will take full advantage of that. For instance, there are games that are coming out um, in the near future, possibly even games like Dirt 3, but there are games on the market that already use DirectX 11. So be sure to uh, have a scope around on the internet and you will be able to find out exactly what titles this card will benefit from. It also has AMD Affinity, it used to be called ATI Affinity until AMD obviously changed the brand name. AMD Affinity is for multi display configurations. It supports up to six monitors as opposed to the original three monitors that it used to. It also has compensation for um, bezels on your screen, has improved display configuration, and you also have the ability for multiple display groups. Obviously, if you've got six monitors, having multiple display groups is going to be a really handy feature. Other features that this has got is uh, improved connectivity, including HDMI 1.4a and DisplayPort 1.2. It also has AMD iSpeed technology, which gives you visual acceleration in video, Blu-ray, Blu-ray 3D, and also television. It supports it using technologies such as UVD3. You also get new and improved image features in games, such as AA and AF, or anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering. Basically, these are features that will enable your games to be less jagged and more smooth when you look at uh, things like buildings, the characters, and so forth. You will also notice that this card has got HD 3D technology for stereo 3D gaming. It also has a feature called AMD Accelerated Parallel Processing Technology. That's taken over from ATI Stream Processing. And the reason that they've actually changed the name of it on these sets of cards now that they've gone to the Radeon brand is just to clear up some confusion and to give you more of an insight as to what it is. And what um, Parallel Processing Technology is, or Accelerated Parallel pro Processing, 
it basically takes the load off your CPU and puts it onto your GPU to give you more of a balanced system. So you won't need the latest and greatest CPU if you've got a card like this. Taking a look at the 6870 and the way that it connects to your motherboard, it does use a PCI Express 2.1 16x bus interface. With regards to the cooling on this card, one thing I want to show you by turning the card around is that it has got ventilation holes here. Now the whole idea behind this cooling design is that the fan spins up and shoots the hot air down here which then obviously comes out of these fins and out into the back of your case. As I said there is one part of this card which I'm not quite sure about and that is the gap here because obviously hot air is going to get out of there and it's going to shoot towards either your CPU or your memory. So I don't know whether that's a foolproof design but because this is a reference card we can't really judge it on that. Taking a look at the actual power options on this, obviously there's a lot of cards out there, lower end cards, which just require the PCI Express interface to power it so it gets the power from the motherboard, but obviously with higher end graphics cards they do require separate power. This particular card actually requires two 6 pin PCI Express connectors. Um, it doesn't use a lot of power, when you're looking at the idle and load wattages, on idle it will use 19 watts and on load it will use 151 watts. Now taking a look at the top of the card over towards this end, we can see that it's got this connector here, which is obviously for Crossfire X multi-GPU technology. If at some point you decide that you want another one of these cards to go in side by side, obviously with your motherboard or sometimes with the graphics cards themselves, it does come with the bridge to connect them. And obviously that is going to permit you to use two cards in a multi-GPU configuration. Earlier on in the review I did speak about how this graphics card takes up two expansion slots in your case and for a very good reason. Firstly it's got these ventilation ports here so that heat can be dissipated out of the back of your case and secondly because of the various different connections. It's got two DVI ports, one HDMI 1.4A port and two mini display port 1.2 ports. There's not a lot that I can say that I haven't already said in the review. Obviously it's a very good performing graphics card and when you look at the benchmarks that we did it's very sort of close cut between the 6850 that we already reviewed and obviously the GTX 460. So yeah, if you've got the money you could go out and buy one of these but you have got to look at the Nvidia side as well with the GTX 460 and decide which one's going to be for you. Obviously this has got a few uh, performance technologies that are slightly tweaked and slightly better than the Nvidia side cards but it depends you know if that's exactly what you want obviously it's got second generation DirectX 11 it has got the ability to have up to six displays and the multiple display groups as well so lots of new technologies where AMD have actually brought it over from the ATI brand over into the AMD brand so it is all down to personal choice but if I was looking for a graphics card and I had the money I'd recommend this